Sumatlet.com delivers the best online shopping experience. With an extensive selection and the lowest prices, you're guaranteed to find the product you need. Here's what you get. Free shipping on all orders over $49. Free one to two day shipping on all orders over $99. All orders placed by 6 p.m. ship out the same day. Shop at Sumatlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, August 24th, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Today in the Finise Monitor is Davis Tarwater, who finally got to achieve his goal of competing in the Olympic Games. And Davis joins us right now on Skype from Knoxville, Tennessee. Davis, good to see you again. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Thanks for having me. I'm sure you're actually more than good. You finally got to go to the Olympics. You got a gold medal to, um, in that 800 free relay. You're a prelim swimmer. What are... What are your emotions right now when you think about your Olympic experience? Uh, it was just an absolutely unbelievably magical experience. I mean, uh, I'm really tired, you know, coming back from it all. It was just such an emotional experience, not only competing, but just being a part of the village, being a part of the whole Olympics, seeing the other sports, and just seeing the energy. It was just, um, you know, I, ne I didn't know what it was going to be like. Um, I thought I had an idea, and it just completely surpassed uh, all my expectations. Uh, this isn't your, wasn't your first national team experience. You know, you've traveled internationally to a lot of meets. How does it compare to the atmosphere of, say, you know, any of the other big meets that you've been to? It, it's not even close. I mean, there, there's such an, a sense of urgency with the Olympics and a sense of importance with the Olympics that... Um, is a lot different from a world championships or any other kind of meet. You know, I mean, um, there's an understanding of how important it is for the sport for every four years to be on display in an Olympic year. And it raises the level of competition uh, from everyone. And so I just think that you can just, you can feel that, that energy, you know, as a competitor uh, and as a, as a spectator as well. And you swam in the prelims of the 800 free relay for the U.S. How did, how did you feel about your swim? Well, actually, hang on a second. I gotta, I gotta put this hat on first. Oh, well, that makes it so much better. I like that. Yeah, you like. All right, no, we can proceed now. <laughs> You're, um, you got the official uh, USA beret there. That that definitely yeah. adds to it. Well, and if I don't have this on, I can't uh, do a very good interview. And like it's like my thinking cap. I've been wearing it everywhere. <laughs> well, it, it it's not only obviously it probably makes you smarter, but it makes you look even better. Yeah, I mean, it's fashion forward. It's probably the, the most important piece of fashion that I own right now, and I've been accessorizing it with literally everything in my wardrobe. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, I swam in the morning, and even in the morning, it was just absolutely unbelievable. There's, you know, 20,000 people in the stands, and they were going berserk for a morning prelim relay swim. You know, it just, it was just, it was unbelievable. And then on top of that, actually having to take a relay exchange, you know, and seeing in your periphery just the expansive uh, crowd in the, in the stands that just kept going up and up and up. It was just, I mean, it was, it was intense. It was the most intense swim I've ever had at any point in my life, and I'm just so blessed to have had the experience. Now, seeing as you had, I think this was on like the fifth day of the meet, you had the whole time to kind of soak up the Olympic experience. Did that kind of help you prepare for it, or was it still just one of those things where it was like, this is still not real for me? Yeah, it was just like still not real for me. You know, I mean, being able to go out there and walk out, you know, you kind of take a deep breath and say, this is the Olympics. And for me, the Olympics had been such an elusive thing. You know, it's just like time and time and time again, I had, um, you know, been so close and not made it, including this previous trials. And when I finally walked out there and kind of took a deep breath and says, and, and said to myself, you know, this is it. This is what we, you've waited for. It was, it was really a kind of a magical moment for me. And I, th I just think I was so emotional that I just, you know, had a great swim and had a great time. Now, clear up some things that were going on uh, before the 800 free relay. There was some talk that Peter Vandergay, who had had a very good 400 free a few days before, um, might get selected to swim in the prelims. Was that ever something that was discussed? Uh, it wasn't anything that was discussed with me. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm sure that 
that discussion was happening um, at the staff level, but it was not something that I was ever informed of. And, uh, you know, Peter's a, a great veteran of that relay, and he's been on there the previous two Olympics, obviously, and he was swimming great. And, you know, he probably deserved a chance to be on there. Um, and that's the thing about those relays is it's completely coach's discretion. You know, you could have uh, won the event at um, – at the trials and then not be put on. So I'm sure there was a lot of discussion. I'm just glad I had the opportunity. Uh, if it if it had gone with Peter, then I would have you know supported Peter and cheered Peter on because he's one of my best friends. And um, but I'm just thankful that I had the opportunity to go. Yeah, obviously because you got a gold medal from it. So you didn't get to stand on the podium with the guys in the finals. Uh, tell us how you were actually given your gold medal. Uh, it's done internally the next night. We have a team meeting uh, at like 5 o'clock before the session uh, every single night of the meet, and uh, the prelim golds are given out um, in front of the team internally, and it's a pretty cool moment. And it's cool to be recognized, you know, by, by the guys that won the medal and, and also the guys, you know, that are just the other guys on the team. So, um, you know, Coach Troy um, presented me, and, and Matt and Charlie with our medals uh, the next day. Really nice. So last time we talked, you were in Knoxville for training camp, and you had said you didn't really know what you were going to do after the Olympics. Um, is that still true? You still kind of got a lot of things up in the air? Yeah, I definitely have a lot of things up in the air, and you know, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. You know, I'd, I, uh, I'd like to continue to swim, I think, for a little while. I don't know exactly what that means and in, in what format that'll be, but um, I, you know, I, I was swimming really well at the end of the summer, uh, and you know, I was I was swimming really well in, in freestyles, which uh, I think that was a, a bit of a surprise for me because I had really kind of put all my eggs in the uh, the hundred two hundred fly basket, and I think I think maybe I'm just too old to swim butterfly now. I'm like twenty eight, which is like a dime. Dinosaur. So I think maybe I should just start doing freestyle like an old man, like Jason Lezak. You know? This is like when he just really started hitting his stride at 28. Well, you know, maybe the, the butterflies would be more tempting knowing that now there's one less person in it. Yeah, well, that, that's true. That's true as well. But, I mean, there's also the old man factor that I have, which, you know, I don't think means anything. I just made that up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it means anything. I think a lot of people are proving that wrong. I mean, Ryan's going to be... Ryan's going to be in his 30s in, in um, Rio, and he'll probably be doing the 400 IM. So, you know, the 200 fly yeah. is probably nothing. Yeah, the, yeah, the 200 fly is definitely nothing. It's like the easiest event. So, uh, I, you know, I got to say that's, uh, that's a big statement to pull. A lot of people won't say 200 <laughs> fly is the easiest event, but I guess when you've been doing it all your life, you probably think it's easy. No, no, I don't think it's easy. I, I think if uh, anybody went back and watched uh, – my performance from the finals of the Olympic trials, they would know that I was in a lot of pain. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a light way of putting it. <laughs> Going vertical with five pianos on your back is the way it looked, but you, you yeah. definitely hung on there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, talking about, you know, a lot of things up in the air, I know that you had talked about, you know, law school kind of up in, in as one of your decisions and, and, you know, with swimming in there. Um, you know, have you had a lot of discussion with, with uh, Dave Marsh, your coach, Matt Credit, who coached you as well, about any of your uh, any of your options that you might have going forward? Uh, no, not really. I mean, uh, I only got home like two days ago. You know, I think any time after kind of the quad is over, you know, it's really a good time to to really reflect and really look at you know, what the future might bring. And I just really haven't had a time to internalize exactly what that means for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm coming off a period where I'm really motivated in the sport, but I'm also really motivated to, you know, pursue other interests. And uh, in terms of school, I, I don't see myself as having uh, the desire to go back to school. Um, you know, I'm content with the masters that I have. And uh, ultimately, I'd, I would hope to be able to do some kind of uh, international business or national finance type work at the end of the day, or or take over for Anthony Bourdain. Um, if if Anthony Bourdain offered me to right now to be his replacement, I would retire from swimming. Well, those uh, are those are two very diverse careers: international business or um, traveling around the world eating food like Anthony Bourdain. 
Yeah, and I'm good at eating food. And I think that any coach that's had the chance to train me after I've had a little bit of a break will understand just how much I like to eat food. Well, you'll definitely have to keep training if you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, for now, yes, you, you, you're right. you got to take the time to kind of enjoy the experience and everything. And I'm sure you'll be excited to walk around the streets of Knoxville, especially with that hat on, and get some recognition. Yeah, for sure. Knoxville has been so unbelievably supportive of me and also of Claire Donahue. Um, it's just, it's really special to have a town really rally around you and really, they're really bitten by the Olympic bug. They came out in full force to see us when we were in town uh, for the Olympic training camp. And it's just, it does my heart good when, you know, a city, you know, that's, you know, this is a decent sized city is so supportive. And I just, I can't thank this town enough. And I'm really looking forward to being able to share this gold medal um, with a town that supported me. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to put this thing in a, in a box and, and worship it on the wall. You know, I want to share this in hopes of inspiring, you know, Knoxville's youth. And that's something I'm really serious about. And so I'm really looking forward to that element of this whole thing. Good. I'm sure they'll be appreciative to be able to see that gold medal, Davis. Thanks so much for joining us today and um, best of luck in whatever the future holds. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. That's Davis Tarwater and probably the uh, best head attire we've seen on the morning swim show here. I'm Jeff Cummings, and that's going to do it for today's show. Be sure to always join us on Facebook and Twitter to join in on the conversation. Thank you for watching.